many moons ago. Yeah. We moved here. 16 years now. What Six- month did you move out? January. I, I flew out. It was JetBlue direct to from Boston to Vegas. It was $69. Wow. <sighs> my mom that. bought my ticket here. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, my February, Super Bowl weekend, 2006. Wow. So I have you beat by a month. I moved yeah. back for two and a half years. So you yeah. kind of have me beat. Total. Yeah. We're talking about your Vegas origin story. The thing that got you here, how did you end up in Las Vegas? Now, if you're born and raised, first of all, good for you. You have that above us, Mm -hmm. and you will let us know. Yeah. Uh, However, that said, if you're not born and raised, text us or call us and let us know how you ended up in the city because everyone has a story. 702-597-1027. The one story I end up hearing time and again is, oh, I was only supposed to be here for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear it so many but times. But I just don't know why you would just like come for two years. Like, what are you going to do in Vegas for two years? Just gamble and then I, like I just, hopefully make some money? I just think that people think they're going to be here for a good time for a little bit and they're adolescents and then they leave, but they never do. Let me tell you what. I get very uh, uh, territorial, I feel like, about Las Vegas because I love it here so much. Yeah, me too. I love Vegas so much. Mm -hmm. And I hate when people are like, I can't wait to get out of here. I'm like, well, then go. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Go if you know something better. Because I picked my sister up from the airport yesterday Mm -hmm. and her her flight was late. So I went to the liquor library uh, right there in (laughs) Terminal 1 and got a rosé and sat down at a slot machine and sat there and waited for 20 minutes. And I sent the picture to my girlfriends in there in New York and Virginia and all over. And I said, I love Las Vegas. I love it so much. Not just for that. It just, honestly, there's something for everybody here. Yes, it's hot. Get over it. At least you don't live in New York. You don't have to shovel heat. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> this is my whole policy. Exactly. Uh, you know, we're getting calls in. Let's, mm-hmm. shall we? Yeah. All right, there we go. Caution to the wind. Uh, VGS, you are live on the air. Who's this? Never mind, they hung up. <laughs> VGS, you're live on the air. Who's this? Ken. Ken, hey, tell Ken. us, how did you end up in Vegas? How did this all start for you? Uh, I got stationed at Nellis Air Force Base. There we go. There go. How long ago? Uh, 1996. And then I met my wife, Leah. Uh, and when I retired, we moved back here because her family's here. Wow. Oh. Well, thank you for your service. And that's pretty awesome. Good on you for moving back. Where Where did you go back to before you came back? Uh, well, I mean, I'm, a, I'm originally from upstate New York. And then we were stationed here in 90. I was stationed here in 96. Uh, we left here at the end of 2001 and moved to Germany. Wow. Uh, from there, we moved to Texas. And then Texas, we moved to UK. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Here. <laughs> Ken, real quick, i got to go back to upstate New York. Whereabouts in upstate New York? I'm from Ogdensburg. Uh, Saratoga. Wow, my girlfriend lives in Saratoga Springs. Well, thanks for listening, thanks, Ken, Ken. And thanks for your service. Ogdensburg, it sounds like a fake name. i got to be honest. It doesn't sound I know, real. and it's a city, folks. Okay, don't get it twisted. <laughs> VGS, hey, hey, you're live on the air. Who's this? Lorraine. Uh, okay, hey, yeah. Lorraine. Hey, Lorraine. Well, where? How did you get here? What is your your Vegas origin story? Okay, well, I was looking for a place to retire because I was tired of the snow and the cold. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I, I, I'm so sensitive many. theme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have friends who moved out here about I don't know 23 years ago. The first summer I visited them and I started visiting them every two years and I had investigated other warm places. <laughs> and, uh, Vegas is made on a grid like the city I came from. Nice. And it didn't seem, I thought it was about the same size, but now I know it's much bigger than the city I came from. All right. And it's easy to get around. It's beautiful. And so yeah. when I retired uh, the next month later, I was uh, on my way out here. I love, I love it. Well, thanks for listening. Have an awesome day. We have other people calling as well. Keep the calls coming in at 702-597-1027. You moved here because your family was here, right? Yeah, my mom, my sister, my brother, my grandma, they all moved here. My aunt and uncle were already out here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I was in upstate New York and I visited in February. Or, or, uh, yeah, it was February and it was like warm out. And I remember I moved and I was like, this is like, I could lay out right now. This is and I did. And yeah. I got like sunburnt in February. And I'm like, why would I anybody ever live in New York? Like, this is so... <laughs> So crazy. Once you realize there's a different way to live. I know. Yeah, it's pretty tough. I know. My, uh, we're, we're running out. I'll, I'll share this story though. Maybe, you know, maybe at nine o'clock I'll share the story about my Vegas origin story because I, I had a MySpace date here uh-huh. in 2005. I was talking to a girl the entirety of 2005. We met in Vegas. It did not go so well, but I ended up here 
and the long and loving it and uh, loving it. Yeah, it was great. My dad actually was one of the first pit bosses at Barbary Coast back in the day, like wow. seventy nine. Yeah, and I just happened to end up here. Tony texted us and said, "I moved here fifty one years ago when my husband got a scholarship to play basketball at UNLV." Wow, love Las Vegas. What bothers me is when people say, "How can you raise kids in Las Vegas?" She said, "I raised two terrific children and five grandchildren." Makes me crazy when people talk smack about Vegas. A lot of smack talk about Vegas. Uh, Juicy's on the line, my buddy Juicy. Hi, Juicy. How are you, girlfriend? Miss you. Hi, guys. I miss you guys, too. Congratulations on the new show. Thank Thanks. you so much. Uh, Juicy, I, I don't know your origin story. Juicy, I know back from the old building mm -hmm. way back in the day. Tell us how you ended up in Vegas. So, like um, the other caller, I'm a military brat, but my dad was Navy, but we always frequently... When he was gone on like his tours on the aircraft carriers in like the Pacific, mm -hmm. he would make it up for us because he'd be gone for like five to nine months, depending on his tour. And then he would take us cross country and we'd always do two nights in Vegas. <laughs> that sounds like yeah. a movie, Juicy. <laughs> yeah. And then we would go cross country and go to like Walt Disney World, right? Yeah. But he decided that he wanted to retire and they're all like, oh, you want to go move to Vegas? And we're all like, are we going to live at Circus Circus? Because that was back in 94. Right. So that was like the only thing that we knew because as a tourist, you only knew the strip. You right. didn't know oh. that there was houses. You know, I remember so, when I visited Vegas the first time going across a pedestrian bridge, mm -hmm. I looked out towards the west side and I just saw like neighborhoods. Yeah. And I'm like, like what wow, the hell is yeah. that? people live here. That's right. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So June 24th was my 28th year living in Las Vegas. Wow. And like you, crazy. Amy, like I get upset when people say, oh, I don't like Vegas. And I'm like, we take pride in our city because sure. we've seen a lot of things go down and come up and how fast is, you know, the city has grown. Yeah. It's just amazing. Absolutely. And it there is a community. Is. Like I love the community of Las Vegas. Like. We're a huge family. Everybody knows everybody, mm -hmm. unfortunately. <laughs> <Yeah, for some laughs> you can't hide. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the one thing, uh, it, obviously, you know, one October here was a terrible, obvious, obviously terrible day for Vegas. But two October is mm -hmm. like my favorite day of the year. Yeah. It is my, cause, because what happened in this city on October 2nd, 2017, we all thought, okay, yeah, you know, we're all come from different places. Sometimes you don't know your neighbors, whatever. That day, this city showed up so yeah, big, and we sure. had an identity to the world mm -hmm. to show what we were yeah. capable of, which was phenomenal. Everybody's story is different. Yours and mine are very, very different. Yeah. I'm a, mine's super simple. My parents moved here. I was 20, but very immature, and I had to follow them here <laughs> and uh, move back in with them. And you were immediately illegally gambling on the strip. I was, and it was great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, and that's why I, I love it here. Mike is on the line. Mike, how did you get to Vegas? I was four years old in 1968. My dad was hired and trained and sent out here to Las Vegas to open up the first Arby's Roast Beef on the West Coast. You are here because of Arby's Roast Beef. Arby's Roast Beef Restaurant. <laughs> there we oh go. God. All right, like the old Pretty school crazy. sign to the big old hat. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He opened up the one on Lake Mead and Bruce. It's still there. Exactly. Oh, my God. How much of your body is constituted of beef and cheddar? <laughs> Uh, not not so much a cheddar, just the beef. <laughs> yeah. the beef and boy. Oh yeah, we grew up on we grew up on those. That's for sure. Man, imagine just uh, coming out here and four years old. No. Everything you know is different. This is crazy. 17 years ago, Hubby's, Hubby was offered a, a sponsored job here. We moved from South Africa with eight suitcases, wow. $5,000 and our two girls who are 11 and six years old. That is insane. Insane. So wow. they've been uh, U.S. citizens for three years now and they love Las Vegas. Well, welcome to Vegas. Yeah, We're that's glad to Simone. Have Thank you for being here. Uh, so, okay, I am here because of a failed MySpace date in 2005. I was reaching out, because back in the day, you know, you're on MySpace, that was the place to be. I was kind of like a MySpace OG. Mm -hmm. I was user 63,000 out of like 400 million. The fact that you know that, man, well, you're here's such what, a loser. I was on everyone's top eight, because before you got the pick, <laughs> I was on everyone's top eight. So I was like, it was me and, and Tom. Tom. That was it. Yeah. So this girl starts reaching out to me, and she is in radio in Northern California, and mm -hmm. I'm doing radio in the Boston area. And we just start talking about radio. Mm -hmm. She reaches out to me. We start to talk about radio, and then... We start talking about ourselves, and then we start talking about each other. And then we're talking on the phone every single day, all wow. the time. 
Wow. And we are just kind of like falling for each other pretty hard uh-huh. because you know when you're when it's je- when there's no physicality and, and it's you all said, emotion. You said this was 2005, yeah. Uh, yes. I'm trying to think of like where cell phones were. They for sure weren't like a uh, video calls, right? No, not yet. Not even close. I think just flip still, maybe. Barely. Razor it, was pretty cool then. I, I, uh, yeah, I didn't have a razor, uh, but like I, it was like a like it was a twisty phone. It would twist. Oh, open. the yeah, you'd flip it yeah, like this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. It wasn't even the cool one from oh, T-Mobile. The sidekick. Wow. No, it was like a real jank one. Whatever the case. <laughs> so you know, but we would send a photo. We did Skype a couple times. Okay. And like I was just so smitten with this girl, and we talked for months and months. And I knew her family was coming to Las Vegas to visit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know what? Listen, I am going to go to Vegas. I'm going to get my own hotel room. Let's meet. And mm-hmm. go on a few dates. Awesome. So I had uh, months earlier, like in April, I had applied to the station across the street over there and uh, didn't get an email back, mm-hmm. whatever. So, but uh, Vegas is kind of on my radar for whatever reason. So I fly to Vegas and I meet her. She's staying at Sam's Town. Mm-hmm. I'm staying at the hotel at Mandalay Bay. Oh my gosh, yeah. Now I am making 25000 a year. My cousin paid for all of this. So thank goodness, because <laughs> I could not afford that. Uh, so I'm staying at the hotel. She takes, uh, we're both like broke and under 25, so we're not renting a car. Uh-huh. She takes the bus from Samstown to behind the Hotel San Remo, which is now the Oyo former Hooters. Yeah. And we meet there in the most sketch area. She comes back to the room. We start like just talking and chatting, and then she starts making out with me. I'm like, oh, this is so great. <laughs> yeah. This is going to work out. <laughs> I found the we're one. We're in love. She realized the last bus was going to be leaving pretty mm-hmm. soon. So we raced back to the bus, kiss goodnight. She says, I'll call you in the morning. We'll get breakfast. We'll watch prices right together. Which, by the way, if you want to know what like a total like you know, boxer <laughs> dropper is for me, let's watch prices That's right. So bad. It's fantastic. <laughs> so uh, the next morning comes and she doesn't call. Heartbroken a yeah. little bit. I call her. She's like, I'm not feeling well. I go to the I go to Sam, uh, Sam's town. We hang out for a little bit. All right, I'm going to get some rest. I'll call uh-huh. you tonight. D- calls me later on that I'm really not feeling that great. So the next day is the last day we have together. Mm-hmm. While I was in town, I listened to that station across the street and I heard who was on the air. They're not on radio anymore. And I said, wow, if I don't get a job at that station, I quit radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, the last day, I pulled out all the stops. I got tickets to Ka. Uh, we went to Monomiga B. Oh, great I do. Oh, I tried everything. We go to the show, the whole nine yards, and I just felt something was off. And I go to give her a goodbye kiss. <laughs> And she gives me the cheek. I can't. She gave me the cheek. I'm not laughing. I mean, I am laughing. You are so laughing at me right now. This is not cool. It's so sad. She gave me the cheek. Oh, my God. So I am now PO'd. I am no happy boy. I am going back to Mandalay. Wait, did you pay for the car tickets or did your cousin pay for the car tickets? No, I paid for that one. Oh, you paid for that one. Yeah, 25 grand a year. It was not expensive, (laughs) not cheap. So I'm so livid and so heartbroken. Mm -hmm. I go back to Mandalay. I pick up my bag. There is a line of 25 people for cabs. And the person that's in charge of the cabs looks at me and says, Go ahead. Yeah, like <laughs> he you're sees it in my face. I get in the car. What's the first song I hear? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It was the worst. And you're just crying in the cab. I flew back to Las to Boston, just livid uh-huh. after how this trip has gone. Is Shut there. up, James. <laughs> I get back. Yeah. I send an email to the station across the street. Mm-hmm. They send an email back to me an hour later. I get flown back to Las Vegas and I move back in January 2006. The guy who hired me is uh-huh. now our senior VP of programming. Isn't here. that so crazy? Small crazy story. Small so that's crazy world. I I just, have you ever Vegas. talked to her? Did you take her out of your top eight after that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> she was permanently out of the top eight for sure. <laughs>